Jesus confirms that the book of Revelation is for the Jewish people. Let me read here in Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 28 and reading down to verse 30. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, daughters of Jerusalem, the Jews in other words, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. Okay? Um, you say, what does that have to do with the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, if you know your Bible, you'll understand who that's directed at. You see, verse 29 matches Matthew chapter 24, verse, or, or, verse uh, 19. Woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Alright? Matches Luke chapter 23, verse 29. All right, and uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 through 17, about the rich men hiding in the rocks and the ca caves and things, and wanting the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. That lines up with verse 30. Luke chapter 23, verse 30 is what it lines up with. So again, one of my main doctrinal stands that I take, that I've preached for many years now, is this thing of the time of Jacob's trouble, it's for the Jews, Jacob, Israel, you know. Uh, that's what it's for. The book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, all the end time stuff, and you know, a third of this, a third of the people are dying, and the ocean becomes blood, and all the other horrible things that are coming. It comes to the Jewish people because of their rejection of God manifest in the flesh. Jesus was not just another prophet like Islam teaches. Um, these bad things are coming. I mean, the, the Jews killed many of the prophets. They killed the three big prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. But then they killed the minor prophets as well. Um, they couldn't stand them. And, of course, there were prophecies given in the New Testament, many prophecies, in which the Jews uh, refused to listen to those as well. But that is the reason why there is God's judgment coming upon the Jewish people. It's for the nation of Israel. That's why you see so many things centered around Jerusalem and the nation of Israel over there. So, and again, you know, you get all these replacement theology nuts and they come out and they say, well, the church has replaced Israel, okay? Then, uh, or, you know, the Jewish people, okay? Then go over to Israel. Israel is a real piece of land. There's no symbolically, you know, whatever else. No, it's a real area. And if you're truly claiming to be Jewish, then you need to go there. Um, because that's the land of promise. And the Jews, in order for them to get that, they're going to have to go over there, and they're going to have to do some serious suffering. Which is exactly what the Bible says would happen. You say, uh, squirrel over here. Um, you say, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would God um, have suffering for his own children, people that he made a, a covenant with? Well, that's precisely the point. Any good father punishes his children. And a lot of these people that are in Israel, they're not really Jews. They say that they are Jews, but they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. A lot of them. Uh, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel, the Bible says. So, uh, just another verse confirming that. We were reading through, just finished up the book of Luke, I guess two nights ago now. We're in the book of John now. Uh, our night, nightly Bible reading, we read a chapter. Uh, each of us gets three verses. I start out three verses, my wife does three verses, and then my son does three verses, and then it goes back to me. And we just do that the whole way through the chapter until we get done. And um, been doing that for many years now. And just works out good. Gets everybody to read the Bible. And a lot of times we see things and say, oh, look at that. That's interesting. That's what we've been talking about or whatever as a family. We actually, you know, discuss the scriptures quite a bit. Um, because we're saved. That's what saved people do. We don't just talk about worldly nonsense. Uh... But there's just so much proof, brethren, so many ways to prove that this 
book of Revelation is not for Christians. It's not intended to purify the body of Christ or some foolish nonsense like that. I mean, if you believe that, then you don't even understand the gospel. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Not our suffering, not our persecution. Suffering does come, but it comes from the lost world. The suffering in the time of Jacob's trouble, the book of Revelation there, that comes from God. Jesus Christ is the one that's opening the seals. Jesus Christ is the one who's punishing a world that has rejected him. Um, and specifically the Jewish people. Uh, he will correct them and bring them back. I mean, read the Old Testament. You say, oh, I'm a Jew, I reject the New Testament. Okay, re then read the Old Testament. See how many times God corrected the Jewish people. That's just the way it is. That's the what Scripture has taught. So, still very early morning right now out here. So I apologize for the some of the bad lighting. Um, using my other my old camera again, not my newer one. With the newer one, the battery's dead. I forgot myself here. I thought I could get all my videos done with the new camera, but when it's uh, below freezing outside. Um, which it is here this morning, then batteries die much quicker. So, but uh, just want to encourage you, brethren, if you're saved, you don't have to worry about the book of Revelation. Um, we're going to be spectators in heaven, like John, the Apostle John, a saved man, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Um, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Okay. <laughs> We may be presented to Jesus Christ as a chaste virgin, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Holy. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is. Not because God punished us and puts us through uh, seven years of horrible, you know, trials and tribulations where you could actually lose your salvation. Um, you take the mark, worship the beast in his image. Any man does that, they go to hell. Um, how does that work out if you're a Christian? It doesn't. That's another reason why you know that Christians aren't going through it. And I preach this and preach this and preach this. Uh, the next supernatural event that we will see is the door opening in heaven. And you hear a voice talking with you as, a, as it were a trumpet. Talking. The trump of God. Not Donald Trump. He's not of God. Little satanic counterfeit there. But, uh... The trump of God will sound and we will be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? It's not the seventh trumpet. It's not the second coming of Jesus Christ mentioned in Matthew chapter 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the... Whoa, hold on a second. If the sun is darkened and all the other things, stars are falling from heaven, the moon doesn't give its light, and that happens, then it's not in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? <laughs> Understand. Little ducks right there in the water. I don't know if you can see them swimming away. So, um, things that are different are not the same. Always remember that. Okay? Uh, oh, we, we have to worry about it. Some Christians are not going to be ready when the Antichrist, you don't get taken up and the Antichrist shows up. Some Christians aren't going to be ready. Okay, then what? Then what? The Christians that aren't ready, they're going to worship the beast in his image and take the mark. Then what happens to them? They're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Oops, no, sorry, they're not. Because they took the mark. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. What a stupid bunch of nonsense. I have no respect for you if you're a posty, uh, mid, midi, pre-wrath, mid-post-trap, whatever. Uh, I don't have any respect for you. You don't understand the scriptures and you don't understand biblical salvation. All right, New Testament salvation. You don't get it. You're not understanding it. And uh, you need to get saved. I mean, literally, you do not believe that you are saved from the wrath to come. We'll, we'll go out before the wrath. Uh, the wrath starts at the very beginning. The Antichrist being unleashed, that's the wrath of God. I mean, come on here. A guy shows up that causes you to take a mark and worship him, and that's not God's wrath somehow? 
Although the wrath, the wrath shows up halfway through or whatever else. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. But hey, you want to believe that? Go ahead. Get off of YouTube immediately. Stop watching me. I'm leading you astray if you're a postie. If you're a postie, you better get out here into the wilderness areas like I'm in right now. Most of you are in the city that are posties. It's kind of funny. But if you're a postie, man, build your survival shelters. Get all ready to survive and endure to the end. Because you're going to have to make it to the end. And you can, you know, be out there in your little underground bunker with your uh, survival buckets and whatever with food in it that's not worthy to feed a dog. But you're going to survive. You're going to make it for seven years, brother. Yes, sir. And you can grit your teeth about John Nelson Darby and dispensationalism and C.I. Schofield and uh, when those guys didn't invent anything. It's what the New, New Testament teaches. You can go back to the first century and I can show it to you. Um, I preached on it for many years. Uh, it's not who taught what, it's what does the Bible teach. Posties, again, they expose themselves. They make it all about men. It's crazy. Um, it's all about us. It's all about the church. The church has to be purified. Well, that's a Catholic doctrine. Hmm. Jesus' death on the cross, cross is not enough. You have to come to auricular confession. And you have to confess your sins to the priest. And make sure that you stay in a perpetual state of grace. And merit your salvation. Earn your salvation. Uh-huh. Popery. I can smell it a mile away. And I hate it. I despise it. Um, I protest against popery. But, whatever. Uh, I'm here to give you an assurance if you are saved. Uh, you can sing the hymns. Um, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Not the Antichrist. Not the New World Order. Not the microchip, mark of the beast, whatever. No. We're looking for Jesus. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, so many other hymns I could sing. Uh, and Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. Trump. Not trumpet. Very important. It's the voice of the trumpet. The noise that the trumpet makes. The voice that sounds like a trumpet speaking with me. That's what Christians are listening for. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Horatio Spafford, I think it was, wrote that after losing all of his children and almost losing his wife. Lord, haste the day. Can't wait to see you, Lord. Can't wait to see the saints. Oh, man. <laughs> I get to sing in some of those songs sometimes. I, start, I just have to quit because I start just weeping. I get so filled with joy. Oh no, sorry. We have to take it all away, Brian. It's, it's all just not, it's not true. You've been deceived. You have to grow up, Brian, and understand the more, the deeper doctrines that you're too dumb to understand. Yeah, I mean, you've spent years studying it. You've spent years answering all the questions, but it's because you're immature. You don't know as much as we posties know. We have it figured out. We suffer. I mean, I wish the posties were out here right now because they could probably hike and like not touch the ground. They probably float about a foot of ground, above the ground. Just, you know, and all the trees bow as they walk by. And the squirrels in obeisance to their holiness, you know, bow. And oh, holy, holy Christians walking by. They'll, they'll endure to the end. Don't you worry. make me puke so uh we're about to enter some nutty times brethren you can feel it i can feel it we all can feel it we know this uh, selection thing coming up 
they're going to do a bunch of stupid stuff. They're trying to get us divided and hating each other, as I've talked about earlier today in my videos. Uh, that's what they want. They want us to kill each other. And uh, we have to fight that. We have to resist them steadfast in the faith. But uh, no, matter no matter how bad it gets, um, remember, Jesus is coming. And, uh, you know, what's the other one? I'm trying to think of the old hymn. Sorrow and something all past. Da -da -da -da. Jesus is coming again. Sorry, I can't think of the words right now. Coming again. Coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon. Maybe evening and maybe soon. Coming again. Coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. Look at the old hymns. Talk about how bad this world is. Our suffering, our persecution is right now. And again, I've done videos on that. That's why a lot of posties, they don't understand the New Testament. They think they don't see any suffering in their life. They're not bothered by or vexed by the filthy things of this world. So they're, in some ways they're right, they're looking for persecution out in the future because they've never had it. Those of us that are actually born again, we get sick and tired of it. Longing to see the Lord. Longing to get away from this sinful, wicked world. So, uh, that's going to be it. Um, maybe I'll put some videos here at the end as I'm closing down the, this one about the blessed hope, the wonderful, beautiful appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ that we all long for. And if you're not saved, uh, you're going into the time of Jacob's trouble with those lost Jews that have rejected Jesus. And you are definitely not guaranteed that you're going to make it through. You better get saved now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Get it straightened out. There isn't anything else that's more important than your salvation. Knowing where you're going to go and where you're going to spend eternity. You have to do that. So, getting towards the end of the trail here. Oh, I kind of wish I wouldn't have worn this sweater now. It's starting to get a little bit warm, warming up here. Can't see my, well, you still see my breath, I guess. Um, it's probably in the 40s by now, maybe. I think it's supposed to warm up into the 50s today. But out there's the lake again. So, it's a beautiful day to be out here taking a hike. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And uh, look up some of the old hymns. The old hymns that were written by strong Christians. Uh, they didn't write them so that they could be famous and have crossover albums in the future where they do secular music so that they can make more money. <laughs> That's not why they wrote the old hymns. They wrote them out of their love and devotion to the Lord. So, this is a cedar swamp, if you will. It's not real swampy right now because it's been dry for a little while, but you can see the cedar trees. That's a cedar tree right there. Northern cedar, white cedar, very rot resistant. If you're interested in that kind of information but you get all these big roots all over the ground more cedar trees right here the paint on them um, but this is the one of the famous type of uh, farce you know you have the balsam fir groves you'll see those and the spruce and you have birch farce paper bark white paper bark birch used to have ash farce but the uh, there's some kind of Asian boar beetle and that's been wreaking havoc on the uh, ash trees and before that right I don't know if it's before that or not but then we have the beech trees uh, Fagus grandifolia I think is the 
botanical name. Used to know all the botanical names for the different trees. Back when I was a wood turner, I would put the botanical name in with the different types of wood I was using. And, uh, but anyhow, um, the American beech tree, big trees with smooth gray bark. And uh, see, so here's a paper bark birch right here. You can see the bark just comes off of it. Real good for starting fires and it's waterproof. So, but I need to quit, my battery's dying here. Um, so that will be it. Thank you very much for watching as always.